don't know who the fuck to trust. This is my friend or my fault. I'm not some exit bro. What's up, guys? It's Juan Zuniga. And before we start this video, I want to talk or address uh, the video that I did last time on the 1,000 calorie uh, workout. Um, you know, uh, I saw the video that Greg Doucette, I hope I pronounced that correctly, and I saw what he said and everything, and I appreciate the constructive criticism. He really didn't rip me apart or, you know, destroyed my video. Like a lot of people have been saying, he actually gave constructive criticism. I'm no fitness expert, I'm not a fitness guru, and I'm not trying to be one. I'm just showing you what I did that helped me lose weight. A lot of you guys have been OGs and have seen my progress and have seen how I went from looking like, you know, uh, I wasn't huge, but I was overweight and, you know, and I was I was fat and I was able to cut down and gain some muscle and all that. So and you guys have seen that. Um, so I just showed you what I did. I appreciate the fact that Greg Doucette, you know, gave some recommendations. Stop, you know, focusing on calories you're burning. There's no product that actually reads it accurately, etc. You know, um, what I do is I do, I, I'm very, I like numbers. I like seeing, you know, I like facts. So I want to be able to know how many calories are coming in and how many calories are going out. But if all those, all that stuff is not accurate, then, you know, I, I, I really can't do that and just do my best. And like a lot of comments have been saying, you know, just focus on what you see in the mirror, what do you see on the scale and adjust from there the calories that you're going, that are coming in because that is something that you can track and you, you can be accountable for. Everything has a nutritional label that gives you your fats and all your different other macros. So I just want to apologize. I in no way, shape or form I tried to do a video to mislead you or anything. I just, you know, I was being sponsored and I did a video on workouts that I like to do, something that I like to do and that helped me lose some weight just to help you guys become more active and actually achieve those goals that you guys have been wanting to do. Once again, I'm sorry if you felt misled in any way, shape or form. And like I said, I want to thank Greg Doucette for that video and for, you know, basically opening my eyes. Now, let's get into the video that I want to show you. So, going back into fitness, like I said, I'm no fitness guru, I'm no fitness expert and nothing like that. I'm going to show you what worked for me and me only. If you want to take this advice, that's awesome, you know, and, and hopefully it works for you as well. So. Pull-ups, in my opinion, is one of those exercises that are very important when it comes to fitness. It's something that, in my opinion, and this is my opinion, is that pull-ups is the true uh, test of strength, in my opinion. If you can do pull-ups, it means you're strong. Because if you're 200 pounds and you can do a pull-up, you can pull up 200 pounds. And the beautiful thing about pull-ups that I like is that it use, you know, you use your arms, you use your back, you use you, you engage your core, so your 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 abs, you're working your abs as well. So it's a beautiful, beautiful exercise, but it's it's pretty hard to do. You know, some people can't lift themselves because either they don't have the strength or their weight to strength ratio is not there. So basically, yeah, you have muscles, but your muscles can lift your weight. So I'm going to show you how to do a pull-up, but I'm going to show you scaled versions of what you can do until you get the strength to be able to do one full pull-up. Now, let's get started. The first thing you have to do is to make sure you're shoulder width apart. Some people say you have to be a little bit over shoulder width apart, a little bit, slightly, but in my opinion, shoulder width apart is pretty good. The second thing is don't shrug your shoulders. Just put them down and relax. Basically, dead hang. Just hang them. Dead. You know, just make sure you have a good grip on it and hang there. The next thing you want to do is pull your elbows down and contract your scapulas like you're squeezing something between your scapulas, like you're squeezing a lemon between your scapulas. And that's going to help you get up there. So you're using, you're engaging all your muscles and you're squeezing and pulling down to be able to, you know, have your chin over the bar and basically your chest on the bar. When you clear the bar, you have done one pull up. Now, I know that's hard and it's easier for me to explain it if I know how to do it or I've been able to do it than doing it if you've tried everything and you can't do it. One thing I want to tell you also, don't kick your legs when you're trying to do a pull up. Don't like with that, you're just using all this energy of moving your legs and you're really nothing's going to do. So the cool the thing you have to do is just hang there, like I said, that hang and you can either if your the pull up bar is too small just contract it or, or bend your knees and lift your legs. If you can stand up and you're not touching, you can do that as well. When you're up there, you don't want to just let go and come down. You want to slowly come down and controlled, relaxed, 
and do it again. And that's, that's it. And like I said, it's easier said than done. Uh, some of the things that I did to help me with the pull-ups, before this um, quarantine COVID thing, it was hard for me to do all this. Um, it wasn't that easy. So what I did was scaled versions of it. First, I also worked out at different other things and I strengthened my upper body. But second, I did, I did scaled versions of pull-ups. So what I did was grab bands, just like this one, and used it to help me up and still have the same effect of a pull-up. Another thing that you can do is lat pull-downs. I don't have a lat pull-down, the gyms were closed, so that's something that I couldn't do, but you can do lat pull-downs, and that kind of like simulates the same movement of scapulas, elbows down, when you do a pull-up. All the things you can do is bend over rows just to strengthen your back and stuff like that. Now, what I did, like I said, it was a skilled version. So I would grab a band like this one, and I have different bands. I have this green one, there's a little lighter. I have this black one and this purple one. These are usually my wife where it uses them. And they are some lighter ones that you can use of these. You can get these from Rogue or you can get them from French Sports and stuff like that. that and they sell them online anyway, even Amazon probably. Anyways, you put the band right here and then you just put your foot there. Now this is gonna give you some movement and it's gonna help you a bit. As you can see, the band was giving me a little bit of help. So in my, my opinion, what you can do is buy this one, buy something a little smaller, and every week change that band. So the way that you should do it is, if you can do one pull-up without the band, even if you're struggling, and you do one pull-up, now what you can do is put this band and do 12 more reps over the one pull-up that you can do. So you're gonna do a total of 13 reps, if that makes sense. So you're gonna grab the band and do 13 reps. Stop, do 13 reps. And then try again and see how many pull-ups you can do. If you can do two more without the help, then add an extra 12 to that so you can start doing that and then start making these bands smaller and smaller until you you know, can do 10 pull-ups without a band. So that's the easiest way that you can perfect and create the perfect pull-up. In my opinion, Pull-ups, like I said, is the per one of the perfect exercises. The cool thing about it is that you can go to a park. You can have one of those pull-up bars that you put on the door, or you know, you can have a rig like I do and do some pull-ups there. And that's the advantage of it. You can do it anywhere, and you can work your upper body very, very well. And from there, you can move up to you know muscle ups and stuff like that, where you know that's even more strength. They're using more upper body strength and a little bit of technique, of course, but you're gonna be a beast when you're done and doing all those pull-ups. Another thing that you can do to help you strengthen, maybe it's not only your upper body strength that you don't have, maybe you don't have grip strength. So what you can do is just hang, do a dead, dead hand. Just hang there and build that strength until you have that grip strength and then you move up to doing pull-ups like this. The other thing you can do is negative pull-ups. Basically it would be you jumping up and slowly coming down. And if you don't, you can't reach, what you can use is put a stool, a little box or something to help you get up there. And then slowly come down. And that's gonna build your strength to be able to do the perfect pull-up. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys next time. Honestly, I don't know who the fuck to trust. Is he my friend or my fault? I'm a f ex.